Hello and thanks for joining us today at noon. I'm Kaylin Johnson and here's a look at the headlines we're following this afternoon. An Arkansas lawmaker proposes limiting the ability to travel outside of the state for abortion services. The reaction from the governor in two minutes. And doctors are on alert for firework injuries this holiday weekend. Their message to you. Plus, Tiny Desk concerts are back and R&B singer Usher did not disappoint. The details just ahead. But first, we're here with meteorologist Nathan Scott and July is here. And what you've been saying, you've been calling it soupy. Can we expect that for this weekend? Soupy, tropical, muggy, steamy. I think all those words will be used out there for the next several days. Temperature already 90 degrees at the Little Rock Airport, and we're seeing a mixture of sun and clouds. That's because we have so much moisture in the atmosphere. We've hit the convective temperature, and you're seeing those cumulus clouds starting to bubble up across the region. It's 87 in Russellville. Good afternoon, Arkadelphia. You're at 88. Look at these dew points into the 70s. So, yes, that is some miserable type of humidity we've got in place. Really not too much showing up here on radar just yet, but I think we will have the opportunity of an isolated to spotty shower or storm anywhere in central Arkansas out there today. Yesterday it was primarily confined down to the south and east of the metro. Today, any garden could see a quick downpour, but most of us will stay on the dry side. Here's the highs today, topping out into the low 90s with a humidity, though it's going to feel more like the upper 90s to maybe close to 100 degrees, and it only gets worse from here. Next week, it's going to be brutal. I'll have that forecast and your holiday forecast coming up. Thanks, Nathan. And new at noon, State Senator Jason Rapert is among a, among a group of lawmakers who are working to pass laws that would stop people from crossing state lines to get abortions. It comes less than a week after the U.S. Supreme Court overruled Roe versus Wade in Arkansas's trigger law banning abortion took effect. According to the Washington Post, Senator Rapert is looking at presenting legislation during the planned special session later this year. He says there is at least one other Arkansas senator who indicated support to the publication, something to keep in mind, the legislation would require a two thirds vote in both the House and the Senate to be considered since abortion isn't the focus of this special session. And on top of that, Governor Asa Hutchinson saying this afternoon that he would not sign a bill like that into law. Here's what he said on CBS Mornings today. The challenge there is that uh, that would be in violation of interstate commerce. Obviously, we right. want to discourage that because the public policy in Arkansas is to uh, limit abortions and to uh, carry out uh, the will of the people. And so uh, we recognize that that uh, is something that even the United States Supreme Court addressed in one of the concurring opinions that this is not intended to restrict interstate commerce. The Supreme Court. Today, President Joe Biden will meet with Democratic governors who vowed to protect abortion rights. In a press conference yesterday, the president called the Supreme Court's decision to strike down Roe versus Wade outrageous and announced his support for a filibuster carve out in the U.S. Senate. He's calling on Congress to pass a law with a simple majority vote. Skylar Henry has more from the White House. Today, President Biden holds a virtual meeting with a group of Democratic governors to discuss the future of abortion rights. It is a mistake, in my view, for the Supreme Court to do what it did. It comes one day after the president slammed the high court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade on the world stage. He also announced his support for a change in Senate rules, despite previous opposition from two moderate Democrats. I believe we have to codify Roe v. Wade, and if the filibuster gets in the way, it's like voting rights, it should be, we provide an exception. In a statement, Senate GOP leader Mitch McConnell slammed the president's remarks as an inappropriate attack on the court, adding the people will now have a say on abortion rights. The Democrats have seized the issue to rally voters ahead of this year's midterm elections, with abortion measures already expected on some state ballots. Planned Parenthood and other supporters of abortion rights have also turned to state courts. In Florida, a judge said he'd temporarily block the state's 15-week ban under the state constitution, following similar rulings in other states. It was not, of course, something you know that we were happy to see. Florida's Republican governor has vowed to continue the legal battle. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House.
This week, the Department of Health and Human Services laid out steps it's taking to support family planning services, announcing millions of dollars in new grants for provider training and issuing tips for protecting patient privacy. And we're following developing news out of Little Rock this afternoon. Police are investigating the death of a Texas man killed in a hit and run. It happened early this morning off the I-30 service road. Officers are identifying the man as 41 year old Terrell Hillard of Texarkan Texarkana, Texas. If you have any information about the hit and run, call Little Rock Police. Now to another developing story. Watson Chapel is once again looking for a new superintendent. This comes after a special school board meeting to accept the resignation of Dr. Andrew Curry after just one year on the job. THB 11's Ashley Godwin shows us many people were shocked to learn he's leaving and they want answers. When the board began the meeting, they only stayed for a couple seconds because they adjourned into executive session. Then two hours later, they came back with two specific motions, one to accept the resignation of Dr. Curry, the other one to have a settlement agreement between him and the district. Let's have a roll call vote. Thursday night, the Watson Chapel board voted to let the current superintendent go. This came as a shock to many at the meeting. I'm angry and I want to know why. He's been a major morale booster for the school. They finally got somebody who was you know, who was loved and liked and respected. Where's the explanation? You had a room full of people. I have never been here where there's a room full of concerned people. Never. It's been exactly one year since Dr. Andrew Curry was hired at Watson Chapel. According to parents, staff, and students, he was very involved with the district. He definitely shows that he cares and he's definitely more active in the life of the students. I see him when we doing stuff for parents and when we do stuff for the kids, he's out there. I see him working the grill in the heat. <laughs> I'm in my classroom teaching and he walks through the door with cupcakes or candy or wearing a Santa suit. Once the board made the motions, people in attendance were visibly upset, demanding answers from the board as they walked out. And with no answers as to who the interim superintendent will be, some are just hoping they can measure up to the work Dr. Curry has done in the past year. Things were looking up for this community and this school, and all of a sudden it's, it's almost like a train wreck. And I feel like we need more people like him. We need more people who care about us, and we need more people who actually listen to us. In Pine Bluff, Ashley Godwin, THV 11 News. Now, after the meeting, we reached out to Dr. Curry for a comment, and we're still waiting to hear back. Now, some exciting news for the Little Rock Air Force Base this afternoon. It will be receiving four more C-130 aircrafts. These will be the newest versions called the C-130J model. And more good news, the Arkansas Air National Guard's 189th Airlift Wing will continue to be the place where pilots train on these massive transport planes. We've been training C-130 air, air crews since 1986 uh, in both the E and the H model, and this allows us to move into the J model as more and more of our Air National Guard uh, and reserve units uh, recapitalize into the J model. The Pentagon is still working towards a delivery date for the new planes. And check this out. Families can now play among the trees and get a beautiful new view of the Arkansas River thanks to a brand new treehouse in downtown. The Margaret Clark Treehouse officially opened yesterday and a group of local students got to take the first steps onto the new play space. The structure is thanks to a partnership between the city of Little Rock, Arkansas engineers and private donors. This is how, in my opinion, you make a great city. You have citizen involvement, you have business involvement, you have a great park system. Three, the tree house is fully open to the public and it's located next to the Peabody splash pad area. And breaking overnight, WNBA player Brittany Griner arrived in a Russian courtroom where her trial on drug charges is now underway. She's being escorted by U.S. Embassy staff. Griner's been detained 135 days after Russian Customs officials say they found vape cartridges containing an illegal oil in her luggage. The 31-year-old is facing up to 10 years in a Russian prison if convicted. 
And for the second time this week, another person has been attacked by a bison at Yellowstone National Park. The 71 year old Pennsylvania woman was taken to a hospital with non life threatening injuries. And starting today, the three major U.S. credit reporting companies will stop counting paid medical debt on cre credit reports. The companies will also start giving people a year to resolve delinquent medical debt before reporting it.